Lesson 5 At the Hospital Medical Words Hello, today we're going to quickly review modals and then we're going to learn past modals. After that, we will review the present perfect tense and then we'll learn the past perfect tense. But as usual, first we have to learn some new vocabulary. And today it's quite difficult. So let's have a look at the first word. A pediatrician. A pediatrician. A pediatrician is a doctor who looks after children and treats their illnesses. A gynecologist. Well, a gynecologist is a doctor who treats the medical conditions and illnesses only of women. A geriatrician. A geriatrician is a doctor who cares for older people. Another one now, an orthopedist. Well, an orthopedist is a doctor who provides treatment for problems affecting the bones and the muscles. We have another one now, a podiatrist. Interesting job. This one, a podiatrist is a doctor who looks after people's feet and treats foot diseases. Next, an optometrist. An optometrist is a person who tests people's eyes and orders glasses for them, like an eye doctor. A stethoscope. A stethoscope. It's an instrument used by doctors to listen to the sound of someone's heart and someone's lungs. Ultrasound. Ultrasound is a medical process using a type of sound that produces an image of something inside your body. For example, a baby. An operation. Operation. Well, an operation is the process of cutting into someone's body or removing a part that is damaged. Operations are performed in an operating room Operations are performed by surgeons, special doctors who do operations. A patient. A patient is a person in a hospital who receives medical care or who is waiting to receive medical care. And an ambulance. Ambulance is a special vehicle used for taking people who are ill or injured to the hospital. Let's go over these words again. We have a pediatrician, a gynecologist. This one is a geriatrician, an orthopedist, a podiatrist, an optometrist, and a stethoscope. Here we have ultrasound, an operation, a patient, finally, an ambulance. Modal auxiliaries. Now let's quickly review modal auxiliaries. Have a look at these sentences. I would prefer to see that doctor. Dr. Barnes can't perform heart surgery anymore. Fritz can't watch the operation. The nurse won't let him. Could I see the optometrist? Dr. Jacobs wasn't able to save the injured man. And now let's look at another sentence. Should she see a gynecologist? She might get ill. Dr. Thomas ought to be in by 10 o'clock. He may be late, though. The nurse would like the patient to sit up. I would rather not see that doctor. Kevin had better visit the orthopedist. Alan must see his doctor this morning. He mustn't be late. Oliver has to have his blood pressure checked. Last year, he had to have it checked. 
every day. Okay, so we have the modal auxiliaries of can, could, may, might, must, ought to, should, and would put here. They are, they are used with verbs to create special meanings. Now the simple form of a verb follows a modal auxiliary. Not appears after to create a negative. For example, if we say can, that would be can not. That's the negative. In a question, the modal appears before the subject. Let's use can as an example. Question, can, subject, you, and then the simple verb, can you come. Now, with have to, or the past tense, had to, the negative is going to be don't or doesn't have to, and the past will be didn't have to, didn't have to. Okay. Let's practice these forms now. Lewis, what should a pediatrician do? He must help children. He has to take care of them. Very good. Monica, would you like to visit a dentist today? No, I hate them. When I think of dentists, I think of toothache. Me too. Rosa, I have to take my wife to the gynecologist today. Should I wait for her in the waiting room? You had better wait there. Your wife could be ill. You can read magazines. Good. Uh, thank you, everybody. Now I think you should look and you had better listen. Look and listen. Alvin could be a nurse if he studied harder. May I look at your stethoscope? She might need an ultrasound. Could the doctor help me, please? Read and repeat. Modal auxiliaries. Okay, so now let's look at past modals. We'll learn four past perfect modal auxiliaries, and these are would have, should have, could have, and might have. The first one we'll look at is would have. Have a look at these sentences. I would have signed the papers for the operation, but I was still dizzy. Dave would have gone to medical school, but he was broke. Would you have seen the doctor? Betty wouldn't have taken the medicine, but she was so sick. Okay, past modal auxiliaries are used to describe past actions or situations that are not real or did not occur, and we usually use them to talk about our wishes about these past events. Now past modals follow this pattern. We have the modal plus, if it's negative, not. If it's not, then have, then plus the past participle. Would have is unfulfilled past intention. Can I reach? Yes, I can. This means you didn't do something in the past. Okay, so 
we form this, remember, the modal in the past, modal plus not, if it's negative, have past participle. So here we have would have for unfulfilled past intention. Let's practice. Okay, let's pretend your father is a doctor. How would your childhood have been different, Monica? I would have been the richest kid in the neighborhood and I would have a sports car now. Great. And you, Rosa? I would have been able to go to the optometrist for free. My family spends a lot of, a lot of money getting my eyes fixed. You're right. Luis? I would have gone to a bad university. Doctors are rich. Well, not all doctors are rich. But thank you, everyone. And now you should look and listen. Look and listen. Jack would have been a doctor, but his university had no medical school. Ken would have applied to medical school sooner, but he was on holiday. Would Mike have gone to a better doctor? Would Alice have liked this hospital better? Read and repeat. Now let's look at another past modal. I should have applied to medical school earlier. Paul should have had an x-ray. Should we have seen the podiatrist sooner? And Lonnie shouldn't have waited to see her gynecologist. Now should have, put this on the board here, should have is an action that was advisable but did not take place. So we'll say past advisable action but it didn't happen. Right. Let's practice this past perfect auxiliary. Okay, my father has just had an operation and the operation was unsuccessful and now my father is even worse. What do you think, Monica? Maybe he shouldn't have had the operation. He might still be okay. I agree. And Luis? The doctors should have given him better advice. Some doctors are greedy. You're certainly right. Rosa, your thoughts? He should have visited other doctors. It is always good to get a second advice. Good. I agree. Thank you, everyone. And now, yet again, you should listen and you should look. Look and listen. Shouldn't Tom have had a checkup sooner? Should we have visited the patient last night? Shouldn't a doctor have been in his room? Should Michael have seen a younger optometrist? Read and repeat. Well, now let's look at another past modal auxiliary. Have a look at these sentences. Ellen 
could have gone to any medical school she wanted. I could have seen the doctor yesterday. My grandfather couldn't have visited that doctor. Could I have waited another day for the operation? Okay, could have refers to past possibilities or choices. And in many cases, the speaker is uncertain if the action occurred. So we can have could have, and it is a past possibility, possibility or choice. Let's practice some of these past modals. I was very sick last week, and I don't like doctors. What could I have done, Lewis? You could have asked your grandmother for a home remedy. Sometimes they are very good. I should have. Rosa, what do you think? You could have called someone for advice. Maybe you have a friend who is a nurse. I do. I do. Monica, how about you? You could have gone to the pharmacy for medicine. That usually helps. I don't like pills. But thank you, everyone. So now you must look and you must listen. Look and listen. You could have gone to a different hospital. John could have taken the wrong medicine. Could we have bought different pills? Could the doctor have operated last week? Read and repeat. Well, now let's look at the last past modal auxiliary. The doctor might have operated sooner. The podiatrist might have lost your chart. The hospital might not have sent your x-rays yet. Joan might have left the doctor's office. Might have refers to past possibilities. We'll put that here. It's the same. It can be the same as could have. Might have past possibility. But in many cases, the speaker or the writer is unsure if an action took place. So it can mean that maybe something happened in the past, but the speaker or the writer is not sure. Okay, so the general form is modal plus not or have, not have or have, modal plus not have plus past participle, only for negatives. Okay, would have unfulfilled past intention. You wanted to do something, but you didn't do it. Should have, past advisable action didn't happen. Good advice, you should have done something in the past. Could have, a past possibility or a choice. And might have, past possibility, maybe something happened. You can also use maybe something happened for could have. Okay, these are quite similar, these two. Okay, so now let's practice... The last one, might have. Uh, let's see, Monica, what might you have done if you were rich? I might have gone to nursing school. Nurses are needed and they make a lot of money. Good. And Lewis, what might you have done if you were born in the US? I might have become a doctor. I am smart. Yes, you are. 
Rosa, what might you have done if you had ten brothers and sisters? I might have hired an obstetrician. Obstetrician, yeah. Yeah, just for my family. He would have been busy. You are correct. He would have been. Thank you, everybody. And now it's time to look and listen. Look and listen. If I were rich, I might have had a private room at the hospital. If Ed weren't so poor, he might have had an operation. Molly might have gone to the podiatrist. George might have seen a doctor sooner if he lived closer to the city. Read and repeat. Present perfect tense. Now let's move on to the perfect tenses. First, we will quickly review the present perfect tense. Take a look at these sentences, please. I have already been to the doctor. He has just examined me. The nurse hasn't given me the results yet. I don't like doctors. I have had better days. Now, the present perfect tense can be used to describe actions or situations that occurred at, a, at an unspecified time in the past. That means some time in the past, but when exactly, it's not important. It can also refer to repeated past actions. Time expressions that we use with the, uh, the present perfect Include already, ever, just, yet, and still. Already, ever, just, yet, and still. Now to form the present perfect we use has or have plus the past participle. There we go, participle. Right, now with specific times we only use the simple past. Let's have a look at two examples of that. The perfect example, oh, excuse me, he has already seen the doctor. Some time in the past, but exactly when, we don't know. Have a look at this sentence. He saw the doctor, and when? He saw the doctor this morning. We have a specific time in this one. No specific time. He has already seen the doctor sometime in the past. He saw the doctor this morning, specific time. Simple past tense. Okay, let's practice. Monica, do you go to the doctor often? I have already gone twice this year. I had a problem with my food. Oh, I'm sorry. Rosa, how about you? I haven't visited a doctor recently. I'm very healthy. That's great. And you, Louis? I have a problem with my leg. I still haven't seen a doctor, though. Maybe I'm next week. Well, you should see an orthopedist. Now, you have seen Look and Listen before, and now you're going to see it again. Look and Listen. We have been to the hospital many times. They haven't told us which medicine to buy. He has written his doctor a letter. 
The doctor hasn't replied yet. Read and repeat. Well, now let's look at one more use of the present perfect tense. He has never been to that doctor. Ken hasn't been a doctor for 10 years. Mary has worked at that hospital for 11 years. And Mary has enjoyed her job very much. Now, these past perfect sentences uh, show actions, past actions or situations that include the present. Uh, this means that these actions or situations began in the past and they continue now in the present situation. Let's practice these ones. How long have you been a student, Luis? I've been a student for many years. I want to be a dentist, so I must learn English. Thank you, Luis. Uh, Monica, what is your father's job? He's a technician at a hospital. He has worked there for 14 years. Wow, it's a long time. Yeah. Rosa, what's your mother's job? She's a housewife. She works very hard because my father is an optimist. He, he has been at his office all the time recently. He can't help at home. Uh, good answers, everybody. And now we have come to another look and listen. Look and listen. Jerry has lived near the hospital for a long time. Cindy hasn't ever worked for that doctor. Dr. Jones has already opened the office. Fran has been a nurse at the hospital for many years. Read and repeat. Past perfect tense. Well, now let's learn something new. Let's look at the past perfect tense. The doctor had arrived at work long before 10 o'clock. When had you last seen Dr. Brown? It was the first time the surgeon had performed an operation. I had never visited a gynecologist before. Now, the past perfect tense refers to an activity or situation completed before another action in the past. This means two things happened in the past, one thing happened before. The past perfect is used to describe the earlier past action. It's formed this way. Okay, we use had or hadn't plus past participle. Participle, okay. Questions begin with had or hadn't. Yes, no questions begin with had or hadn't. Then we would have subject, past participle. Okay, now this emphasizes the duration of an activity that was in progress before the other activity. We use time expressions often with this tense. We use already, just like the present perfect, already, just, 
maybe rarely, recently, still, and yet. Okay. Now, connecting words are often used also. Connecting words such as after, let's put gaps here, after, before, by the time, and until and when. Now, the simple past is used for the second action or the later action that happened in the past. Let's look at two examples to show this. Okay. Until 1988, Dr. Smith had worked at St. John's Hospital. Until 1988, Dr. Smith had worked at St. John's Hospital. Now, Dr. Smith's work was the first activity in the past. And it is completed, it was completed before another time, 1988. So we use the past perfect to show us that this was the earlier event, the earlier action. Now let's use another example. It had begun to rain when I left for the doctor's office. It had begun to rain when I left for the doctor's office. Now, in this sentence, the first action is it had begun to rain. This is the earlier action. The past perfect tells us this is the earlier action. I left for the doctor's office is the second action in the past. It happened after. So first, it began to rain after I left for the doctor's office. Past perfect for the earlier action, simple past for the later action. Okay, let's practice. Rosa, can you give me a sentence using the past perfect? Sure. The doctor had arrived before the operation started. I hope so. Good. Monica? The pediatrician had worked at the hospital for 20 years before he left. Wonderful. Lewis, what do you think? The orderlies had brought their children to the optometrist before 1999. Right, good, to the optometrist. Now, as usual, a good job by everyone. And as usual, it's time for Look and Listen. Look and Listen. Before they went to the hospital, the children had cried for hours. After the nurse had dropped her stethoscope, she began to laugh. Before 2000, I had never visited a gynecologist. The orthopedist had moved to San Diego before the earthquake. Read and repeat. Well, let's do some exercises now. Monica, uh, you can give me uh, three sentences about podiatrists using should. Okay. Lewis, three sentences about nurses, and you use must. And Rosa, you can use must too, and three sentences about orthopedists. Okay, Monica. Here are my sentences. A podiatrist should have a small nose because feet are smelly. A podiatrist shouldn't tickle people's feet. A podiatrist should give pedicures. You're a funny girl. Lewis, how about yours? 
ego um, a nurse must mustn't be careless a nurse must help the doctors a nurse must be patient um, must be friendly to the patients good good and rosa an orthopedist must know a lot about the bones an orthopedist must go to university for many years an orthopedist must read and write medical journals yes you must very good job everyone so now let's do another exercise let's do the same thing except we'll use would have should have and could have now let's begin with the sentence if I were a doctor mm -hmm. and let's say Rosa could have Monica you can use might have okay. and Lewis should have who's going to go first Rosa if I were a doctor yeah if I were a doctor I could have married more a more handsome man if I were a doctor I would have you could have yeah I could have more money excellent in a bank. excellent okay good your sentence is Monica if I were a doctor I might have opened a nice office and if I were a doctor I might have stopped smoking. Oh, really good. Okay, Luis. If I were a doctor, I wouldn't have only a little money in the bank. If I were a doctor, mm -hmm. I would have a big yacht. Good, big yacht. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yacht. Okay, very good. Thank you. Now it's time for an exercise using the present perfect. Okay, we're going to fill in the blanks using an appropriate verb in the present perfect tense. Monica. You can begin. Kelly, something, a nurse, for 10 years. Kelly, something, a nurse for 10 years. That's easy. Kelly has been a nurse for 10 years. Okay, excellent. Kelly has been a nurse for 10 years. She still is a nurse now. Okay, Lewis, your turn. The doctor something already something the charts the doctor already the charts the doctor has already seen the charts okay the doctor has already seen the charts and Rosa the last ones for you the surgeons something just something the operating room the surgeon something just something the operating room the surgeons have just entered the operating room okay have just entered that works the surgeons have just entered the operating room great job everybody thank you okay let's do one last exercise let's practice the past perfect now I will give you the part of a sentence with the simple past in it and you complete the sentence with the past perfect okay Rosa you can go first the nurse something when the ambulance arrived how about this the nurse had just left when the ambulance arrived good head just left so we have oops we don't need that the nurse had just left when the ambulance arrived ambulance arrived okay Lewis you do this one the doctor something in medical school until 1988 what do you think the doctor had been in medical school until 1988 good had been the doctor had been in medical school until 1988. Monica, here's one for you. I, mm -mm, a doctor before last year. What do you think, Monica? I had never visited a doctor before last year. Wow, I had never visited a doctor. I had never visited a doctor before last year. Okay, great everyone, thank you very much. Now listen and write. 
Listen and write. Now listen and write these sentences. Number one. June can be a nurse if she wants. Number two. Janet should definitely visit her doctor. Number three. We must leave for the hospital now. Number four. Jeff didn't have to see his wife's gynecologist. Number five. He should have visited his surgeon sooner. Number six. The doctor would have operated, but it was too dangerous. Number seven. The podiatrist couldn't have done a better job. Number eight. I might have bought more medicine. Number nine. Helen has been a nurse practitioner since 1976. Number 10. Before the doctor saw the chart, he had been very happy with the patient's progress. Now, check your work. Number 1. June can be a nurse if she wants. Number 2. Janet should definitely visit her doctor. Number 3. We must leave for the hospital now. Number four, Jeff didn't have to see his wife's gynecologist. Number five, he should have visited his surgeon sooner. Number six, the doctor would have operated, but it was too dangerous. Number seven, the podiatrist couldn't have done a better job. Number eight, I might have bought more medicine. Number nine, Helen has been a nurse practitioner since 1976. And number ten, before the doctor saw the chart, he had been very happy with the patient's progress. Well, now it's time to read and answer the questions. Read and answer. Larry is a plumber. He has been a plumber for 23 years. Larry is sometimes depressed. He knows he could have been a doctor. Larry's parents were very rich, but they were misers. They never spent their money. If Larry had known this, he might have gone to medical school. He could have been a good doctor. Larry has lived in Chicago for 15 years. He has a good job and he should be happy. He has a beautiful wife, Margaret. He has two wonderful children. Before he was married, he had been a plumber's apprentice for three years. Now he has a good life, yet Larry is often sad. He thinks of what might have been if he had only gone to medical school. Now listen and answer these questions. 1. What is Larry's job? Number 2. How long has Larry been a plumber? Number 3. Why is Larry sometimes depressed? Number 4. What is a miser? Number five, what might Larry had done if he knew his parents were rich? Number six, how long has he lived in Chicago? Number seven, what is his wife's name? Number eight, how many children do they have? Number nine, before he was married, how long had he been a plumber's apprentice? And number 10, what does Larry often think about? Now, check your answers. Number one, 
What is Larry's job? Larry is a plumber. Number two, how long has Larry been a plumber? Larry has been a plumber for 23 years. Number three, why is Larry sometimes depressed? He knows he could have been a doctor. What is a miser? A miser is a person who doesn't spend money. What might Larry had done if he knew his parents were rich? He might have gone to medical school. And number six, how long has he lived in Chicago? He has lived in Chicago for 15 years. And number seven, what is his wife's name? His wife's name is Margaret. Number eight, how many children do they have? They have two children. Number nine, before he was married, how long had he been a plumber's apprentice? He had been a plumber's apprentice for three years. And number 10, what does Larry often think about? He thinks about what might have been if he had gone to medical school. Okay, see you next time. Bye-bye. Practicing English. Tark, what's wrong? You look terrible. Are you okay? No, not really. One of my students was really ill in class yesterday. And I think I might have picked up something from her. Ugh. Oh no, that's terrible. You should go home and rest. You know, it's cold and flu season. You ought to be careful that you don't pass the cold on to others. Uh, I know, I feel really bad. I think I have a fever, my body aches everywhere, and I'm starting to get a bad headache. <coughs> Plus, my eyes are watery, my throat is sore, and I'm coughing every five minutes. <coughs> sure sounds like a bad cold to me. I know, me too. Tarek. Tarek, you look even worse today. What are you doing here? You should be in bed. I know. I've been to the doctor's office this morning and she said the same thing. She gave me some pills to take and some stuff for my throat. But I haven't taken them yet. Yeah, but why didn't you go home? Well, I have these tests to score for my class and I have to get them done. Man, look at you. You look... I know. I've been told. I look terrible. Yeah, that's the word. Terrible. Thank you very much. It looks like a bad cold. Have you been to the doctors yet? Yes, I have. I went to the doctors this morning, before I came to school. What did she tell you to do? Well, you know, the usual. She said that I should take these pills, with plenty of fluids, and rest for three days. She also said I might have to come back in three days, if I'm not better. Yep, that's what they say everywhere. Okay, so what are you doing here? Well, I just gave my class a bit term yesterday, and I want to give their test scores back. So I have to get these tests done. Yeah, but your doctor said to get into bed and rest. I know, but... Look, I know you must be feeling really awful. Why don't you give the test to me? I will score them and then I will give them back to you. In fact, I'll take your class tonight so you can go home and rest. You're kidding. Would, would you do that for me? Of course. Maybe someday I will be sick and you can return the favor. You know, mm. you shouldn't be around these people when you're ill, as you might spread the germs to other people and make them sick. Yes, I know. Well, Dave, if you could take the class and tests for me, 
I could go home right now. Would you score these for me? No problem. What else do you need? Well, if, if you could take my class for me tonight, we're doing a reading on Shakespeare. <coughs> and in grammar, we're studying modals. You know, can, could, will, would, might. Okay, that's easy enough. Thank you so much. This is great. Now I can go home and rest. Just show me your lesson plan and we'll be set. Thank you again for your help. On this page. Oh, okay. okay. Tarek, hey, how are you doing? David, you wouldn't believe it. I just came back from the hospital. The hospital? What happened? You won't believe this. Wait a minute. Why do you have that bandage on your head? Well, the medication that the doctor gave me made me feel really tired. This morning, when I went to take a shower, I fell and hit my head on the tile. I had to go to hospital to get my cut bandaged. You're kidding. No. It's been a terrible three days. First, I get the worst cold of my life. Then I fall in the shower and I have to get my head sewn up. It's one thing after another with me lately. Wow. That is a bad week. You have had some really bad luck. Well, I'm glad I'm better now again. But I was sick on my days off from teaching. Now I still have five more days until I have time off again. Well, the good news is that you are better. Your class made you a get well card, and we are all glad to see you again. Thanks. And thanks again for taking my class too. And I am glad to be feeling well again. <laughs>